So far looking at springs, what we can see is that you apply a force and the spring gets longer. But this is very much just specific to this particular spring. I could make a different spring, maybe wind it tighter, make the metal thicker, and we'd have very different properties. What it's sometimes more useful to look at is rather than the actual physical thing that we've made, is the actual material that it's made from. And this is where we can extend the ideas of force and extension to stress and strain. As you prepare for exams, you might feel at times that you're under a lot of stress, there's a lot of hard work, and then you feel the strain. But in engineering and physics terms, these two words mean very different things. So first of all, stress, what's that? Well, basically, if you apply a force to an object, then it will deform. So we saw the springs, how you apply a force, the whole thing will move. And basically, if you have a force that causes this, uh, causes some kind of deformation, then we said there's a stress applied. And we can talk about the force per unit area. And the symbol for stress is a bit of a weird one. It's uh, a sigma. So stress is equal to the force per unit area. If you have something which is being stressed, then it will change shape. And strain tells us how much something changes shape compared to its original length. And if we look at strain, uh, we can basically uh, give the symbol for strain this kind of uh, epsilon, and that's equal to the extension over the original length. Just be aware that sometimes uh, this extension is also given a uh, symbol delta L, uh, and sometimes the length might be L naught or it might be a capital L. It doesn't really matter about the symbols, but this is effectively how much something got bigger compared to its original length. Now in terms of units, well, if something uh, is a force divided by area, then the units of stress are going to be given in newtons per square meter. And if we look at strain, well strain, because it's a, a meter divided by a meter, it has no units, it's a dimensionless quantity. So, is stress related to strain? Good question. It is. The more force you apply to an object, the longer it's going to get. So, there is a relationship between the stress that you apply to an object and also the strain that it experiences. Now, this really does depend on the metal. If you apply the same force to a piece of copper as to a piece of aluminium or steel, then they will all change by a different amount. And we can look at this ratio of stress to strain, uh, and this gives rise to something that we call Young's modulus. Now Young's modulus has a symbol E, uh, and it's equal to the ratio of the stress applied to the strain. If we look at mild steel, for example, the value of E is about 210 gigapascals. The reason it's pascals is because effectively one pascal, which is a unit of pressure, is the same as one newton per square meter. Uh, which we can also measure stress in. So we can measure it in newtons per square metre or pascals. And because this is a unitless quantity for strain, that means the units for stress are also the units for Young's modulus. And it takes a lot of force to get metal to, the, to deform. So that's why we have a giga here. So about 210 gigapascals is a kind of, uh, kind of value that we'll typically get for something like steel.